On this episode of Test Chamber, I don't even know if we're playing a game or if we're watching a TV show or some kind of student project. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Reiner. Ben Hansen's forcing uh, me to play this. What is it, Ben? Uh, this is a new game twist. from a new studio called No Goblin, but let's just sit back and enjoy for now. Okay, well, I gotta introduce one more person, Kyle Hilliard. Hey, I'm here too. Okay, shut up now. <laughs> you might notice <laughs> Sorry for talking. A little peculiar. Great use of stock footage. <laughs> Well, you don't think they shot this for the game? <laughs> oh, maybe they did. Yeah, they've been shooting it like boyhood for the last 40 years. <laughs> but I'm That's California. It it's beautiful. Beautifully compressed maybe. as well. <laughs> I don't like Hi it. There. Uh, Geo Rigio Manus. All right, so little backstory <laughs> here. <laughs> I don't think we need any. No, just a little bit. So this is from... Uh, I think the lead creator is named Dan Teasdale. Well, he used to be at Harmonix. He was a designer on Rock Band and whatnot. So and then he went over to Twisted Pixel and he worked on games like Gunstringer. Uh, and then this is the first game from his new indie studio. And Kyle, I guess you checked it out at PAX? I did. I played it a little at PAX and I talked to the No Goblin guys a little bit. Um, but let's play uh, a little bit here. So. Oh, this is the spinning car game. Oh, you know it? I heard about it, yeah. You heard about it. Heard the legend of the spinning yeah. car game. Yeah, legend. Said, like a water cooler. Someone's game. like, you see the spinning car game? I was like, nope. Oh, <laughs> I hit some some folks. Oh, I, okay, those don't hurt. Some things you can blast through. Some things you can't. Like fences typically aren't a problem. Trees are a huge problem. I guess you uh, But I was really delighted because I follow Dan on Twitter, uh, Dan Teasdale, and he's been tweeting about this game forever. And so he's like, oh yeah, I'll look forward to that whenever it comes out. But apparently, I'd never checked out gameplay footage, and so I'm a big FMV fan, and so I knew that that was a part of the games. I was looking forward to it from that angle. And then the game like Saturn. Yeah, the really? Yeah, there's a lot of FMV games for you there. I should sell my PS4. Uh-huh. Name's Mick. Uh huh. <laughs> so, anyways, then the gameplay started, and <laughs> my mind was blown because it is a crazy homage to Karu Karu Karin, which is an obscure Game Boy Advance game that is genuinely one of my favorites. One of my favorite GBA games for sure. Uh, and this, it just plays very, very similar to that. It's like this, but you're a stick. Yeah, you're Whoa! a stick. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, see, I'm hitting cars. So that's that's the challenge here is you want to navigate while the car is spinning. I have no control over how much the car rotates. I only have where it goes and how quickly it rotates. I can speed it up. Right, you can speed it up. And then later on, you actually get the ability to jump, which helps out quite a bit. Uh, and different other perks through the upgrade system here. So oh, it's oh, <laughs> good thing I repaired my limo and ran right into that wall. Okay, let's see. It's a weird fusion of like GTA 2 and Crazy Taxi and Crew Crew Corinne, which I'm sure I'm butchering that name, so I apologize. What but. was that game, Irritating Stick? Yeah, PS1 game. Yeah, yeah kind of like that too. You can't run into things. Yeah, it's a little it's bit a little like, like that. Operation. Right, right. Oh, I'm like <laughs> ignoring my destination and just having fun. That's the last thing you want to do with this game. <laughs> so fun. I booted up this game uh, over the weekend, like on Saturday, and I just sat down and beat it in one sitting oh. just because I loved it so much. Uh, oh! You're terrible at this. You need to try a little bit harder, Kyle. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try now. This spinning but it is just bizarre how much it feels like this game was made for me with the pretty cheesy FMV sequences and the irritating, or not the irritating stick, but the Kru Kru Karin gameplay. Uh, it has a good sense of humor, good vibe to the entire thing. It's so pretty. This is your desert island game, then. <laughs> That's exactly this it. Yeah. The future of uh, I mean, it's it. The main campaign is pretty short. I beat it in maybe like two and a half hours, something like that. Uh, but there's a ton of other stuff that you can unlock. Wow, but you had a good time the whole way through it. Though. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, and it's pretty cheap. It's like eleven dollars on Steam. Ever want to take on uh, and really it's only on Steam. Uh, at this now, point, yeah. I'll yeah. even help you out with. But so, I mean, with production budgets like this, it's, it's going places. <laughs> So I talked to him a little bit at PAX okay. and played it, and uh, one of the one of my Just favorite things that I immediately like wrote down in my little notebook of notes is that they recorded five hours right worth of takes right. of Giorgio just looking back to the back seat silently. She so, doesn't talk at all. Yeah, Giorgio's the main character, and she's driving. Uh, this, is a, this is a good one. Oh, and this is, I asked them about these two kids. Apparently these are some kids of some of the developers. Oh, nice. They don't reveal the second kid until the end of this mission, which is confusing. Oh, I, spoiler. <laughs> So yeah, there's somewhere on someone's hardware, there's five hours of that. Well, what was confusing <laughs> is when I started this game, George is the main character, and every time somebody gets in the car, she turns around, and I'm like, oh, that's smart to not have her talk, because then they can save space and not have the game be massive with all these video files by just reusing the same clip. But there's a ton of customized footage of her turning around, like, beyond just changing what's in the green screen in the background. 
Oh, Kyle, have you ever driven a limousine? Do you have any idea how this works? Uh, I've driven plenty of limousines, uh, but not in circles. <laughs> you know, suddenly there's a second there. <laughs> It's very confusing. Uh, yeah, I guess they just had like an open casting call for the people um, who are just in the back seats. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, it's not really. They didn't go out and like hire professional actors, which you can, uh, you can kind of tell. <laughs> Speaking of not that's part of the charm. Yeah, not professional actors though. Uh, Eric Pope from Harmonix is in this game. Okay. He plays a farmer in the third area. There's a he has a nice collection of hats, if you don't know. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Uh, also, there's a nice reference to oh. John Drake, who's another former Harmonix, now Sony employee, who's been in a couple of videos He's of ours. Okay. Yeah, he's just a terrible individual. Yeah, Reiner has uh, some beef with him. Yeah, there's some uh, good giant bomb references uh, just to what please is that? fans. Just big bombs? Never heard of that. Uh, yeah, no, I, I won't. I won't spoil it, but oh, it's okay. it's a very touching little nod, little tip of the cap. Uh, wag of the finger. It's yes, it's a wag of the finger. <laughs> so they're on the take. Yeah, no, I think they're just buddies with that entire giant bomb crew. So I'm except for Dan Rickard because he's new field. and not really likable. Oh, it's you. Yeah, so I teach both driving and baseball. You want to make a big deal about it? <laughs> <laughs> so weird. I like it. It's weird. Uh, I you know, like intentionally B-rate things. Yeah, there's I'm always... I'm a big fan of bad shark movies, and, and I like Twisted Pixels, you know. I don't know. Their catalog of, yeah, of games that they've School done from the Gun Stringer to, you know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even, even the, what was it, Loco Roco, whatever it was called? Loco Cycle? Right? Loco Cycle, yeah. <laughs> Loco Roco is a weird uh, PSP game. Yeah. No, it's funny. We went down there. Uh, let's see. I think we're on the Darksiders 2 cover story trip when we visited Twisted Pixel. And that was just when they were wrapping up. Uh, just to be clear, this isn't a Twisted Pixel game, though. But uh, that was just as they were wrapping up. Um, help me out. Miss Splosion Man. Uh, and they were showing us like okay, all kids. the live action videos that they shot for that, just <laughs> off of their computer. <laughs> the, the wedding and, sequence. I, I, yeah, exactly. I never ended up beating that game, but just seeing all those sequences is so worth it. It's just amazing. With uh, Major Nelson, randomly, he's like yeah. he officiates the wedding of Miss right. Explosion <laughs> Man and Mr. Explosion Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those games are cool and weird. <laughs> Oh, now you have to play baseball if you haven't already. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you're doing more. She emoted too much right there. <laughs> I like her just being a blankless expression. But there's yeah. first step so they have they have little side questy oh type things that you can do oh here. There's one where okay. like, there's a soccer ball bouncing, and you have to like keep it on the hood of your limousine. So it's more than just point A to point B. That's nice. I mean, yeah, if you want to flesh it out. But they try and vary the missions a fair amount. But, I mean, a majority of the game is you trying to navigate this limousine. Uh, and I can see people maybe getting a little bit annoyed for the missions where, like, the start of the mission is on the other side of the map, which is pretty mm -hmm. rare, but it happens every once in a while, and you have to travel all the way over there and try to navigate in the open world with the spinning mechanic. Mm. If you're trying to treat it like a GTA game or <laughs> anything like that, you'll just lose your mind. Oh, here's that bouncing one. Uh, but if you just treat it like a puzzle game, like an action puzzle Whoops. game, which is basically what it is, uh, it's really satisfying, and I still love the spinning mechanic from Kuru Kuru Kuren, which has an assist trophy in uh, Smash oh. Brothers, for that's probably the way most people are familiar with those weird spinning stick There's games. your connection. Yeah, but um, if you own a GBA, you should definitely get it. Or Six a Japanese of Kur Kur Kurin. Exactly. <laughs> or if you have a Japanese GameCube, they released one on the GameCube, which has you just multiplayer, to have one which is really great. Around. Or just come to Game Informer, we'll let you borrow ours, because I certainly checked one out right when I got here so I could finally play that Japanese game. Kyle, nice. this is the least entertaining thing you could be doing. All right, let's burn! Yeah! <laughs> uh, there's a bunch of stuff you can unlock, like you get new skins for the limo. Ooh, uh, like a leopard print? Oh, you can get uh, hats too, right? Yeah, you can get <laughs> hats for the Beyond limo. hats, it really gets bizarre. Uh, you can get like a, an eagle that flies around on top of well, the vehicle, uh, or just I mean, weird stuff that you strap to the top her, of this thing. Well, she's just meeting me. And so I got a question for you. Yeah. That's clearly not a limo they're sitting in in those cutscenes. What kind of car do you think that is? <laughs> Ford Taurus. Oh, no. I mean, it, it looks small. Colors. Like, it looks like a little... Well, it's the, ma beater. it's the magic of Film Reiner. You never really know. They never pan over to see the other side, so... I'm, I'm just sure... going to say, take a look at the, the door. Hi. I'm sure it's an Oldsmobile. Uh, who's that? They're on a date. Let's, yeah, they're on a lovely date. Driver. And by the way... Believe it or not, these storylines do continue throughout the course of the game. Well, we've met, we've met the uh, the driving instructor twice already. That's so, right. So yeah, we learned a lot about him. And like there's movies. a there's a main love interest for Georgia. That, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but that's the core movies. of the story. So what happens in the end? Uh, I'll tell you. No, <laughs> don't tell me. It it definitely involves a skeleton. I'll tell you that much. 
so there's a surprising amount of skeleton over. footage in this game, oh. and that's maybe the funniest and weirdest part. Thanks, <laughs> So is that, if this had a box, that would be a good bullet for the back of the box. <laughs> Surprising amount of skeletons. Yeah. Damn it's, Steve. Oh, it's an interesting challenge oh. to try and make a stupid game that's still fun to play, but I feel like they pulled it off. Yeah, it's kind of like that surgeon simulator kind of like, you know. I guess it's a little bit in that vein, yeah. But Like where the, the gameplay is funny. Like that's hard to pull off, you know. Right. And the gameplay is maybe the least funny part. Like sometimes the crowd will say funny things as they're running away. I still think the gameplay is just fun. Uh, but then trying to pull off that cheesy. Georgia oh, hang on a second. This may be what I'm talking about here. Limousine for hire thing. The little did Giorgio know that a curveball was about to land in the back seat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Are you, you're Giorgio? Oh, thank goodness you're here. <laughs> I'm running a little behind. You see, She's quite the uh, actress. Julia's wedding is at 11, not 1, so we need to book it. Let's go, Giorgio. <laughs> Excellent. She is a great silent actress, whoever she is. Whoever you are, Georgia. She, did, she does a very good job of never getting annoying to look at. I would like to hear that. I would have liked to hear like the, the sort of direction, you know, for those scenes. It's right. Like, in this scene, uh, look perplexed. <laughs> it is funny whenever you pick up a passenger oh. and they don't mention the fact that you're spinning. <laughs> it's like the things are the first thing most people mention, and like Elizabeth here does mention it, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also a rival uh, limousine driver later who also spins, and he claims that he's the best spinning limo driver or something. It's pretty complex. I'm kind of interested in this I story wanna... now. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's super oh fun. Gosh. You are just the bee's knees. Thank you so much. She's got so lipstick much. all over her face. Yeah, it's a nice joke. touch. Hey, so she reminds me of Reese oh, Witherspoon a little, a little bit. Okay. Uh, I see a little the energy. A little, it could be her. A little bit of Lena Dunham sure. in there is kind of what I always picked up from her. Who's that? From Girls? Oh, okay. Hello. Girls yeah, is a great yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. At least the first two seasons. The only ones I've seen. But <laughs> Not some weirdo that's seen season three. See? A friendship really is blooming. Really building chemistry. Uh, I want to see the uh, the menu where you upgrade stuff. Yeah, there's a shop over to the... Room. Is it the wrench there? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I don't know Let's if that's see. repair. Ooh. I think I think that might be the upgrade one. Yeah. So I want to see. I want to see that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look. I think I, I don't know if here. it'll show you the outline of stuff. I believe it does. Oh, this is the. I can repair. also look here. So well, new parts. These are different abilities that you can unlock. Like okay. the next one lets you go over water and stuff like that. I do have the. I forgot to point this out earlier. I can slow everything down too. Right. You're supposed to wear helpful. 3D glasses as you do that. It's <laughs> really those, necessary. Those uh, easy to find green and pink 3D glasses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get them in comic books. Uh, go to the go to the world map here, Kyle. How do I do that? Do you know. Uh, start. Okay. Have you played a video game? Uh, no, I'm not aware of. Uh, I I thought I was just it's watching a movie. It's huge, like Skyrim. Uh, yeah. So there's three different worlds. You might be able to pan around here. There okay. we go. Oh wow! All right. That's Jeez. like that's the last one there, and then this is the second one over here. Okay. Uh, the second one's kind of annoying because there's a big cliff that's obnoxious to get around. But you can like unlock shortcuts in there. You can also buy property because everybody likes buying property in games, and that'll give you more money eventually. Uh, oh, so like you're you just like earning money? Is it like right daily or something? Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works. I think it kind of trickles up over time. Uh, so you could go to the next mission up top there, Kyle. No, we want to see the shop. All right, we found uh, where you need to customize it. Uh, so, well, that was quick, Kyle. All right, different <laughs> hats you can get. Oh! A sign with Giorgio's face on it. Oh, that's awesome. How much? Oh, I have 81 bucks. Oh, I'm totally buying that. Nice. Go back in. I Let's want to see more. more. I want to see more. Well, hold on. Look at that. That's a good looking billboard. Okay. God, everyone's going to get in there now. Uh, you can get different horns. You can unlock along the way. So what can you do? Did you unlock any of these? What are some of the weird ones? Uh, I don't remember any. I didn't really get too much into this. Like okay. I was beelining through the plot. Gotcha. Trying to get as much as I can. And you I'm want to find out what happens back. at the end. Okay. All the different paint jobs you can get. Go down to the... Uh, oh, we can look at these. Yeah. The hyphen on the lower right is the strangest. Oh. Some sort of debug code thing or something. I immediately went for the thrifty businessman. It's pretty good. I what like is this. the Hideo or Hideo? Oh, it's like a box? Oh, I it's metal gear. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this music. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, go back uh, Go back to the stuff that you can put on the roof. Uh, the hats? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, we can look at these. Yeah. I okay, there's the oh, there's eagle. eagle. Greg. <laughs> He's involved in a mission later on. Oh, uh, you can buy some... Uh, and you can't, like, combine these, can you? No, no. Moving no. day? That's nice. 
dog dad. Of course, hot dog dad. Oh, for Halloween. Yeah. So fun to Waffle some nice cream. That's what I would do. Everyone, that's a, that's your a twisted, twisted pixel, pixel reference. reference right there we there. go. You can't ignore it. Cool. Well, I like uh, I like my billboard. I'm pleased. It'll really help you navigate. I'd love to know the physics of how this works. It'd be nice if the tires were sideways a little bit, uh, just to try and make some sense of this. Yeah, it really world. breaks the immersion. They'd know? have yeah. to be like skidding on like soap or something. Right, right. Those tires would burn out. I love it just constantly leaving marks everywhere it goes, just destroying every street. But they still let it happen for some reason. Well, I don't think we need to see any more of Kyle's bad gameplay. I think I'm with Aww. you. Ben Hansen, take us out here. Why should people play this? I think I've made a pretty good case. If you're looking for a cheap game that is just pure, stupid, silly fun that's still relatively fun to play, uh, definitely check it out. Especially if you're a fan of, you know, intentionally cheesy FMV right. sequences. Yeah, it's just, it is a great small game made by a small team. Ah, you're the worst, Kyle. Well, now I'm That sounds to... good to me, Hanson. And uh, <sighs> as always, everyone, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next Test Chamber. <sighs> the end. <laughs>